he was talking to Gordon and James in the engine shed. The fat controller is getting a bigger engine to help me, said Percy proudly. Nonsense, said Gordon. We don't need a bigger engine. You just need to work more and chatter less, said James. Percy sighed. No one listens to me. They think I'm a silly little engine and order me about. I'll show them. But he didn't know how. Later that day, Percy brought some coaches to, to the station. Hello, Percy, said the fat controller. You look tired. Yes, sirs, replied Percy sadly. I don't know if I'm standing on my dome or my wheels. Cheer up, Percy, laughed the fat controller. The new engine can do the work, he alone. You can help Thomas and Toby build my new harbour. Oh, thank you, sir, said Percy happily. Next morning, the new engine arrived. He was a great western engine. What's your name? asked the fat controller. Montague, sir, but everyone calls me Duck. Because they say I waddle, I re replied the engine. I don't really, sir, but I like being called Duck. Duck it is, then said the fat controller. Percy, come and show Duck around. Percy and Duck got on well. Duck knew how to make the trucks behave and soon they were almost finished. James, Gordon and Henry watched Duck quietly doing his work. Let's have some fun, they whispered, and they wished quack, quack, quack. Percy was cross, but Duck ignored them. Then the engine began to order him about. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? asked Duck. Yes, they do, replied Percy sadly. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. And he whispered something to Percy. We'll do it tonight. That evening the fat controller was just about to go home for tea when he heard a terrible noise. He hurried to the yard. Henry, Gordon and James were wishing furiously. Stop that noise, below the fat controller. They won't let us in, hissed Gordon. And the fat controller realised that Duck and Percy were sat calmly at the points outside the engine shed, refusing to move. The fat controller was very angry. Duck, explain this behaviour, he shouted. I uh, beg your pardon, sir, said Duck politely, but these engines are giving us orders. Uh, please can you inform them that we only take orders from you. Duck and Percy, you are causing a disturbance, thundered the fat controller. And as for you, he said, turning to the big engines, you made the disturbance. Duck is quite right. This railway, this is my railway and I give the orders. Henry Gordon and James were very embarrassed. From then on, Duck worked well at the yard, and the fat controller was very pleased with him. One day, Duck was resting in the engine shed when the fat controller arrived. Would you like to have a branch line of your own, he asked. Yes, please, sir, Duck replied excitedly, and he took charge of his own branch line, which ran along the coast to the small railway. Duck was very proud of his branch line, but he couldn't do all the work himself. So Donald and Douglas took turns to help him. One evening, he was talking to Donald. You don't understand how much the fat controller relies on me, said Duck proudly. I'm great at Western. Quack, 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 interrupted Donald. You sound like you laid an egg. Now let an engine slip. Quack yourself, said Duck indignantly. Indignantly. The following morning, Duck spoke to his driver. Donald says I quack as if I laid an egg. He said, let's play a joke on him to teach him a lesson. I have an idea, laughed his fireman, and he whispered something to Duck and his driver. That night when Donald was asleep, Duck's driver and fireman put something into Donald's water tank. The next morning when Donald stopped for water, he found an unexpected passenger aboard. A little duck, duckling popped out of his water tank. 
his driver and fireman could hardly believe their eyes. But Donald smiled. I know who's behind this, he laughed, and Donald told them what had happened in the shed. The duckling was tame. She shared the driver and five and sandwiches and rode in the tender. But as the day went on, she grew tired of travelling and hopped off at a station where she stayed. Before they reached home, Donald and his driver and fireman made a plan that night. They were very busy, and when Duck's crew arrived in the morning, they made a surprise. Discovery. Look, Duck, they laughed, there's a nest with an egg. In, in it, under your bunker. Donald opened a sleepy eye. Well, well, he exclaimed. You must have laid it in the night. Duck laughed. You win, Donald. It would take a clever engine to get the better of you. Duck and Donald became good friends, and the duckling settled at the station. She lived in a pond nearby, but she always flew back to the station to welcome the engines. Donald was her favourite, and she sometimes hopped on for a ride. The station master called, called her Dilly, but for everyone else, she is always called Donald Sutton.